season 20 has changed things up quite a bit, and some of the strategies that used to work well might not be as good this season. In this video, I'm going to go through some ideas that I think will work well to earn you some dubs in Ranked. <laughs> the first thing to say is that the game obviously plays differently if you're a solo player or if you're three stacking. But even if you're solo queuing, it's good to keep in mind what legends synergize well and which don't. Obviously, if you're good at the basics, shooting and moving, then that will take you quite far all on its own. But even if your mechanical abilities are fantastic, there's a lot more that can swing games when you're playing against other good players. For a comp to be good, it needs to answer some questions. First, what is your preferred playstyle? Basically, do you like to try to read the ring and get into position early for the end game? Ring. Or is that for the birds and you're chasing gunfire like some insane version of Rambo? Or are you going to play one or the other based on where the ring goes? Hybrid. In the past few seasons, most teams played hard ring, with endgames being crazy and full of sweats. But with the scoring system being different, I'm not quite sure yet how the lobbies will play out. Based on seasons past, before Ranked got stupid, my guess is that it will be a mishmash of both playstyles, with only a handful of teams in each endgame. Second, when you take fights, how are you pushing them? Do you play a bit passive, trying to do I some poke damage and then push when you get a crack? Or are you hyper aggressive and just inting everything? And finally, how are you going to use your abilities to your advantage? Can your abilities synergize with your teammates? Do you even use your abilities? She's up with you. Hint, you should. Now, I tend to be a You're bit more passive yourself. and play a hybrid style. Uh, this means I want a good balance on my team with some utility, some aggressiveness, and some ability to hunker down. Well, now that we've asked the questions, we need to start answering them. For the first two questions, it really comes down to what style you, you want to play. You and so, which characters are best suited uh, yeah. to which styles? The Assault and Skirmisher Legends tend to work best in an aggressive playstyle, the Controller Legends tend to be a bit more passive, and then the Recon and Support Legends tend to work well as either, but prefer to support the playstyle of the other players on the team by providing information or utility. So let's go through them. Quick caveat here. I'm not going over every legend. Maybe I'll do a legend ranking in another video. I'm just going over my favorites, or the ones I think will be the most impactful. If I missed your favorite, let me know why I'm wrong in the comments. Some of the popular support characters are these. Conduit. Her heal is still really good to give a bit more uptime during fights, and her ult works well as a quick defense. She did get a bit of a nerf, but I don't think it's really that big of a deal, as she still does what she does really well. Then you've got Newcastle. His ultimate works well to create cover out of nothing, and his revive is even more annoying to push against now that it can revive with hit points. And my last favorite pick out of this bunch is Loba. She'll help you loot up and move out of your POIs quickly so you can be pushing fools, or she can help you keep your inventory filled in the end game when things are all going to hell in a handbasket. So for the recon characters, I've seen them all get played, and here are my thoughts on them. First. I don't understand the allure of Vantage. Yeah, her movement is okay, her sniper is kind of cool, but I just don't see it, especially when you have other options in this class. You've got all three of Blood, Crypto, and Seer, and they all have the ability to scan in one way or the other, so they can all help the team with information gathering and mid-fight tactics. Then the controller characters. First is Caustic. His barrels can now be chucked further than Uncle Rico can throw a football, and his ultimate can be devastating when used correctly. He's a menace, and he can be used either aggressively or passively, depending on your team's playstyle. Honestly, I think Caustic is going to be one of this season's best legends. Next is Watson. Now, Watson is still the queen of holding area. Her fences are annoying to fight through, and in conjunction with her pylon can make even the smallest bit of playable space safe, especially with the abundance of fuses, valks, maggies, cats, caustics, and other characters that can throw stuff for free you see these days. Finally out of this group is Catalyst. Now, her wall is shorter than it was, and it doesn't last as long, so it's not quite as powerful in the open. But, with the right upgrades, it extends quite far, which can make rotating a bit easier, 
or it can split teams apart, giving easy shots. Next is the Assault category. And here, my favorites for this season are Bang, Fuse, and Maggie. They all pack some serious damage with both Fuse and Maggie being able to abuse cover and force movement from other teams, and Bang utilizing her smoke to either team up with scan characters or creating space and separation. And finally, for the skirmishers, none of these really stand out to me. They all bring some movement, some ability to push and find angles, and the ability to pop in and pop out. I think Valk this season is going to be a strong option because of her ability to take height at will, and Wraith might be the weakest, as she's the only one who has no verticality. So, what are some of the best comps? Well, like I said earlier, comps work best when abilities synergize to make the sum of their parts better than the individuals. If you're aggressive and want to hunt for kills, here are some options that I think will work really well. First, Bang, Caustic, and Bloodhound. Now, this is a comp that we're seeing quite a few of the pro teams playing in the ALGS scrims, including TSM, Oxygen, and Moist, among others. You get the best of both worlds of smoke and gas, and Bloodhound can see through it all to push like a maniac while their ult is up. Then, with the scans, they can help both Bang and Caustic remain relevant, even with all the smoke. Caustic can also barricade a room if you need to reset, and Blood scans can be really good for recon and information gathering. You could swap Blood for Seer or Crypto, but I think you lose some of the aggressiveness of Bloodhound. And in the same way, you could swap either Caustic or Bang for someone who brings some mobility like Valk, Horizon, or Octane if you want to be able to traverse the map a bit better. Or you could swap Caustic or Bang for a Conduit if you want a little bit more uptime during fights. Some of the pro teams are playing the comp this way to great effect. Now, aggressive option two is a little off the wall, and this is an idea I've been playing around with, so we'll see if it actually works. But you've got Fuse, Maggie, and Conduit. So pairing the firepower of Fuse and Maggie will give you an immense ability to pressure your enemies and push them out into the open to be able to get shots on them. Then, during the ensuing trades, your Conduit can keep you up to be able to bring the fights to a quick finish. You sacrifice a bit of utility by not being able to scan ring consoles or survey beacons, but you're here for kills, not to find the final ring. Also, you're getting your shields from dealing damage and wiping kids off the face of the planet, so you're going to be okay in that department as well. Again, you could swap out either Fuse or Maggie to give some more flexibility, maybe a controller legend like Caustic or Watson to be able to hold some ground for the endgame. If aggression isn't really your style and you want to use your wits and find your way carefully to the endgame, maybe something like this will be more up your alley. So first option here is Bang, Blood, and Watson. With the inclusion of Watson to Bang and Bloodhound, you're gaining the ability to hold ground and create space, scan ring consoles, and pop the gen to regen shields, provide some protection against other aggressors, and possibly create arc stars. You'll still be able to find your way into rings, scanning both consoles and beacons, scanning as you rotate and smoking off enemy teams so that you can get the best spots early and make your presence known. Watson could be swapped out for Caustic, but we've talked about that comp already. Or you could swap out either Bangalore or Bloodhound for Conduit or Loba, depending on if you want to flex towards fighting or bunkering. Loba really helps with playing the long game as you can take space early and then use her ult to finish looting. Leveling up your shields using this comp might be a bit difficult as the goal won't be to fight early, so you'll want to find evo caches and use your abilities so you can make sure you don't fall behind the rest of the lobby. A second option here would be Catalyst, Bangalore, and Conduit. This comp gives some really interesting options. Again, you'll be able to scan ring consoles, and you'll be able to rotate utilizing bang, smoke, and cat walls. You'll also be able to barricade and trap doors. And you'll have the ability to swing fights and stay up with conduit. I think this comp could be really flexible and give some interesting ideas for how to play both the edge and ring, depending on how you're feeling that game and where the ring position is. And for option three, we have something completely off the wall, and one I hope to run at some point, just to be different and see what happens. And this is Bang, Crypto, and Rampart. Now, we're taking two legends from the bottom of the meta, I'm assuming, in Crypto and Rampart, but pairing them with Bang gives them some really interesting utility. You can scan both ring consoles and survey beacons to see where the ring is going and where enemies are going to be to find your way to the best positions for the endgame. 
he can utilize Rampart's walls to create space and barricade buildings. Then, with Sheila, Bang Smoke, and the drone, you can lay waste to teams that try to push you. I'm not sure this would work, but it sure looks like it'd be fun to try. So, what comps are going to end up being the best? Well, let me know in the comments which you think will be the best, or most fun, or most goofy comps this season. But so far as I'm concerned, whatever you have the most fun with is the best comp. If you main a character that's fallen out of the meta and you really want to play them, do it. There's no law against that. Yes, Apex is about getting kills and getting wins, but at its heart, it's still a video game. And video games are meant to be played for fun. So, maybe you choose off-meta legends and see what happens, like my uh, Bang Crypto Rampart idea. Or maybe you decide that you'll have the most fun by trying to eke out the most of every bit of non-mechanical advantage that you can get. Really, whatever makes it more fun for you to play this game is the best. Unless you're competing for money, then you should probably play to win. Well, that's all I've got for today. I'll see you out there.